Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Have You Seen It Lately. I'm your host, Matt Sunner. I welcome you to the DJB Productions Network. I'm hoping you're checking out all the other shows that we have available. Uh, DJs After Dark, that way cool wrestling show, Capes Not Included, so on and so forth. The list goes on and on. If you've been checking out our shows, you know of our content. There's a little bit of something for everybody. If you're new to our content, new to the show, we welcome you. I invite you to check out all those other shows. We, again, have a lot of great content, no matter what you like. If you are not new to the show, I welcome you back. I know it's been a while since we've had some brand new content, but we've had a lot of scheduling issues, and we're looking at changing up the format a little bit. So until we nail down the new dynamic of the show, I wanted to put a few things out there that I'm hoping you're going to enjoy. These next few episodes that I post up, it's going to be, instead of Have You Seen It Lately, it's more of a Have You Seen It episode. I'm going to talk about some great movies that I really enjoyed that uh, most people do not really know about. If you have seen them and you like them, please comment on the video. Let me know that you've seen it. Let me know whether you liked it, whether you thought it was garbage, whatever the case may be. Our first episode is going to be the 1990, sorry, 1991, 1981, 1981 slasher film, Mad Man. Now, this movie, it's one of my guilty pleasures. It's not a really, really great movie, but it can be fun, especially if you really know the details surrounding the film. It was first-time filmmakers, a lot of first-time actors, and the ones who did have acting experience, it was mainly... Uh, stage acting. They really hadn't been on film before. And again, first-time filmmakers capitalizing on the slowly and rapidly growing field of the slasher movie. Now again, came out in 1981. Um, the lead character in this movie, uh, well, our, our lead character might be, you could say, Madman, but our heroine in this movie, as most of, again, your early slasher movies had, it was always, you know, the quote-unquote last girl. Uh, she's played by Galen Ross. Now, any of you have seen, potentially, um, Dawn of the Dead. She played Francine in Dawn of the Dead. There you go, you see a picture of her there without the makeup. And that little middle shot is from her role in Creepshow. She played uh, Ted Danson's lover in the uh, Something to Tide You Over segment of the original Creep Show. So, she was cool in this movie. I really liked her. Uh, she did not do a whole lot of acting, though. Uh, she only was really active for about four years. She's now gone on to being a writer, producer, and director of documentaries. So she's still involved in the business, but obviously not in front of the camera and definitely not as a scream queen. So uh, it's fun. The premise of it is this, uh, this camp, as most of your slasher movies tend to be. Obviously, Jason Voorhees started it Friday the, Friday the 13th out at a camp. This is a camp for uh, gifted kids, students, whatever. And it's supposedly the last night before the Thanksgiving weekend. Parents are supposed to be coming up, um, so on and so forth. And there you all gather around this campfire. And they end up getting told this story, the local story of this farmer that had gone mad. His name was Mars. The story is, uh, he was a really nasty guy. Ends up one night going stark raving mad. Kills his entire family with an axe. Walks down to the local pub puts the bloody axe up on the bar, and orders a drink. So the townspeople figure it out. They grab them, string them up on a tree, hang them, and then for good measure, they take his axe and whack his face with the axe. They come back the next day. The body and the axe are gone. And now supposedly he roams the woods. And if you say his name above a whisper, he's going to come and get you. Now, of course, to add to the air of the story, of course, they're telling in this campfire story near this farmer's old house. So one of the kids figures, okay, yeah, ha, ha, funny, scary story, whatever. He says, uh, let's see how bad this guy really is. He picks up a rock and yells at the top of his voice, 
Hey, Mars, Madman Mars, come and get us. Throws a rock through the window of the house. And sure enough, Madman Mars comes and gets them one by one. And as I said, it's, it's, just, it's a fun movie. Do not expect Oscar-winning performances from these people. Um, one of the things I really do like about it, though, is some of the makeup effects. You end up with Madman Mars. This is what we end up seeing. A uh, little gash there above the eye where they hit him with the axe. Tip of his nose is missing because apparently, again, part of the legend is at one point he got in a bar fight and somebody bit off the end of his nose. Um, and it's just, I really like it. I mean, it is, especially if you like cheesy 80s slasher movies. I mean, it doesn't really get much cheesier when you're dealing with a guy as one of your main characters, who eventually, as most of the characters are going to do in these kinds of movies, ends up dying. But this guy thought he was going to be the stunt double for Burt Reynolds in Smokey and the Bandit. I mean, look at that. The jeans, the red shirt, the mustache. All he's missing is the hat and the Trans Am. Come on. Again, though. I enjoy this movie, and I think you will, too. Um, the um, It was not a hit movie. It was not a blockbuster by any sense of the word. But, I mean, this did get some traction in the theaters. It made $1.3 million at the box office, and it had a budget of, like, $350,000. So it definitely made money for the filmmakers, definitely made some money for all the people involved. And um, it's got a small but dedicated following. Uh, there's actually a documentary. It was a fan ba uh, fan made documentary called um, uh, "The Legend Lives: Thirty Years of Madman." You can actually um, find it still on um, Amazon Prime. Both that documentary and this movie. If you've got Amazon Prime, it's there for free. And if you're familiar with the band CKY, and if you were watching uh, MTV's Jackass, Bam Margera, all those guys. That started as CKY, Camp Kill Yourself, named after the band, which uh, Bam Margera's brother played drums for. And the former vocalist, Darren Miller, when he wrote their song, Escape from Hellview, the theme song for Madman inspired that song. Not only just the, the vibe of the song, but the tone of it, uh, a lot of the writing, a lot of the, the tones in that song are similar to the theme song of Mad Men. So, again, if you like cheesy slasher movies, I think you'll enjoy this. This is one of those movies I definitely recommend watching it with some friends. Especially if they're like my friends and they're a bunch of smart asses. Because you throw this movie on, one of two things is going to happen. You're either really going to enjoy it. Or you are going to think, this is cheesy, ridiculous, why am I watching this? And if you got some smart asses with you, at least you can give it the Mystery Science Theater treatment. So again, very short episode. I'm hoping you enjoy it. I'm going to post up a few other movies that I enjoy. i uh, going to give you some background on them, why I think you should check them out, why I think they're noteworthy. And again, if you enjoyed this show, if you're coming back to have you seen it lately, I'm sorry we've been gone so long. We're working out our scheduling issues, we're working out our content changes, and we hope to be back with full episodes in the very near future. And again, if you're new to us, please check out all of our other shows on the DJB Productions Network. Like the videos, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we hope to see you soon. Take care.